Now, one little bonus I wanted to toss into the course here is some of the tools inside of IntelliJ. Gave me an idea from looking at the book, the chapter after the detailed chapters that we just went through starts talking about automated test tools. And the book was written in, in copyrighted in 2003, which means it was probably under development in 2002. It's now 2018. And you know the pace of technology. Things change a lot over time. So what's mentioned in the book is some of it's not even available anymore. But I did want to follow along that idea and show you some of the things inside of IntelliJ. And Eclipse is going to have very similar tools. And as far as I know, what I'm showing you is also available in the community edition. I might be wrong on that because I am running Ultimate, but these tools are pretty common. And the first tool I want to show you is if we come over to our test class and when I click right click in the gutter, you can see that I have a run dialog and also a debug. And the debug is very handy. So let's find a test here. And I'm going to put it right here. I can click inside the gutter and say, come up here and say run debug. And now I, I got that breakpoint and you can see that I, I've stopped that test. IntelliJ does a really nice job. You can see a lot of the parameters there. I'm not going to dive too far into the debugger. <laughs> I'll break it, spend a whole section of the course on the debugger, but just wanted you to make sure, aware of that functionality and know how you can go in, inspect objects and see what's going on inside of them and how things are getting set. Very handy tool to step through your code and see what's going on. You can even jump over and like see things run a step at a time. So very, very handy tool to be able to do the debug. I'm going to stop that and we can get rid of that breakpoint. We're not going to need them. And let me close that dialog. And now the other thing I want to do is show you this option here of running with test coverage. So I'm going to go ahead and run that option. Now this does take a little bit longer and you can see that it ran pretty quick, but now we can see over here, now I have coverage coming up and it gives me metrics saying that 100% of the classes are covered, 94% of my methods are covered, and 97% of my lines are covered. So that's actually really, really good. Don't have to do every single method or every single thing. Once you start getting over, I, this is just a real broad stroke, 80% uh, or so, you're going to start losing value as far as the amount of coverage you have. But this is a very handy tool to keep an eye on your test coverage of as you're developing what's going on. And let me expand this out as well. Now we can see 100%, 100%, 100%. But in money, I've got something that's missing. So let's bring up money and expand him out. And I'm just doing a double click on him and resizing it now. What we can see here is see these bars here that are showing up. These It's hard to see on this color screen, but they're kind of a greenish color. So that, that's good. That's covered. And then here, we're getting this little reddish bar here. That's telling me that the two-string method is not covered. So that's what the test coverage is covering about. I'm not too worried about getting test coverage on two-string method, so I'm going to call that good. But uh, this is a tool at your disposal, so now... As we come through here, we can see that the other classes have 100% coverage. And when you're following test-driven development, that is very, very common to see is where you have really good test coverage. So if I come up here to the class and double click on it again, it will return me back to that project view. So um, very handy. You get, get this coverage window that will show you your various packages. And then over here, we only have one package. So that's why there's only one listed there in the right-hand side. But now you can see at package levels, you will get uh, classes covered, lines covered, and then on each class itself, you will get that. So really, really handy tool when you have a larger project to see where you're weak in test coverage. You can just right click or just click and say run with test coverage and IntelliJ goes out and does that. Now, a couple other things that we can uh, also look at is under analyze, you have code cleanup and silent code cleanup. You can set up rules. I'm not going to dive into that. There's a lot of opinions on that, but you can go in and, and review those as well. Let's see here, inspect code. So I, I just took analyze, inspect code, and now this came up, and this can see me uh, code style issues, like here, 
I'm going to go see it. I did a public and interface. I don't need to do that. So I can remove that. I'm trying to see, oh, always USD. So that's just there. And then here's like declarations could be weaker. I can make this package private. This is a good one. So I'm going to go ahead and say make final. And then also say make final there. And so th these are different inspections that help you write better code. And then you can also see problem bugs, <laughs> spelling. Oh, it's looking at the license and stuff. So a few typos in there. So it's going to look at a lot of different inspections for you. You can have a great deal of customization that you can enable. And I'm just looking through some of these as well. So, so like here, we can make that package private because I, all these are running out of the same package. So yeah, let's go ahead and improve these. And I'm going to commit this. I'm ad adding in a final review. So of what I'm accepting. So let's go ahead and that's kind of a, a bogus one saying that's always USD. I, I'm not trusting that one. And yeah, oh, it's actually looking at the get ignore file. So yeah, we don't need to look at that. You do get a lot of false positives with stuff like this. So let's go ahead and collapse that. So you can see that it took a lot of the, the privates out of there, made things final. So that's exactly what we want. Um, expression got rid of the public. That was my mistake. And we can see here, IntelliJ is still saying that. So we can do that. So I'm just accepting some of these refactorings that IntelliJ is offering. And in, in the past, these tools were fairly heavy. I'm, I'm talking back when the book was written. A lot of these tools were rather heavy to utilize. And you actually ran them in the build process, but as things have improved and become more efficient, uh, we can see that things have evolved and now we can do it right from the IDE. In the past, you'd have to run reports and have those come up and then examine the reports out of your CI build. So. Real, real handy stuff here. And these little tools are there to help you catch common errors. I use them all the time. So it's not, not a sign of weakness to be using them or anything like that. It does help catch common themes. So I did see the modifiers. And it, it makes sense. I mean, we're in a single package and we just have a handful of classes. So nothing else is using them. So they can be restricted to that package. And it is a good habit to do that. So a number of capabilities I highly recommend looking at some of these other inspections here, analyzing this, you can get some pretty interesting stuff out of that. So a lot of really nice tools inside of IntelliJ. So like I said, I am going to check this in on a final branch for this project. You can see all the refactorings I did because I wasn't explaining each one that I went through there. A lot of them were recommendations based on IntelliJ. So go ahead and check them out and explore these tools because that IntelliJ does have some very powerful tools, both in the debugger, test coverage, and then the code analysis tools, all things that you can be using to make your coding experience more productive and more quality.